Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live with Community Matters. And Dennis Wong of the uh, 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 C. Grand College, College program. Grand College, which is the really the oldest and most central college in the all of UH Manoa, isn't it? Yes. That's what that's what UH Manoa was established for, the C. Grant College. Yeah. Yes, sure. Yes. And, uh, Part of the Land Grant College, same thing. Yeah. It's it's a takeoff from the Land Grant. Program. Yeah, yeah. And and he's written a book. Um, this is the latest update of the book, Homeowner's Handbook to Prepare for Natural Hazards. We're going to talk, we talked about that last week. We're going to talk about it again, uh, especially now we need to talk about it and get people aware of the need to protect themselves in the case of extreme weather and the like. So, Dennis, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to be back. And last time we didn't get to cover everything that we needed to, so yeah. you asked me back. Yes, I did. And I, I would like to cover the risks today, and maybe it's a certain refresh there. But the first thing is, We've, we've had volcanic eruption in the Big Island now for, what, 90 days? Right. Uh, and so what is, what is the risk of this going forward? What is the risk of this happening again? How concerned sh should we be? Okay. So um, we should be concerned. Um, it's hard to say how long the volcanic activity will last. And we covered that a little last week. And um, in this show, I'd like to just show a little bit about how vo vo the volcanic risk that people should have expected, and also how that risk, just the concept of risk itself, yeah. uh, I will use that to explain the concept of risk and relate that to hurricane risk, say for Oahu. Okay, so, you have some slides now about the Big Island, yeah? Sure, so this is a recap of last week, but we just want to show uh, uh, a key indication of risk is the past. Geologists always say the past is the key to the future. So why don't we go to the first slide? Um, okay, so there was a slide before that. We had the slide before. Okay, right there. Okay, so that was uh, just before, that was a few days after the volcanic eruption occurred. And you could see the key thing is this map is on the um, southeast corner of the Big Island. And it shows, um, it's from the USGS, and it shows the history of lava flows in the area and the current lava flow. And the key thing is there's an 1840 flow and then right above vacation land, there's a 1960 flow and below is a 1955 flow. So it has a history of lava going by. So people would really expect lava, even though it may not have happened for 60 years and it, they may have like amnesia about it happening. It, um, Different generations. Yes, because yeah. people forget, even within five or 10 years, people forget about hazards sometimes. But if we go to the next slide, you can see what happened. Okay, so this is just a, a map made by the USGS two days ago, and it shows um, now this whole area in between the 60 flow and the 1955 flow has, uh, has been covered. The lava is coming out of Fisher 8. And it's going into, it went into the vacation land area and now it's further to the south. But also you can see the former coastline there that's almost a mile out. And we covered that last week. So we wanted to just explain about a lot of times you look at the history of certain phenomena and it gives you an indication of the risk for the area. We'd like to relate that to the hurricanes on Oahu. Now. Yeah, so what, okay, so what about the risk of, uh, okay, the eruption will ultimately come to a stop. We, we, you know, because they always do. Right. Um, and and, and it'd be quiet after that. But the risk continues. Yes. It could happen again any time. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have to wait 60 years. Yes. Uh, and the world seems to have a lot of this kind of seismic, you know, disruption these days. Um, so that's an ongoing risk, am I right? It's an ongoing risk. It's an ongoing risk. And the, the lava could stop, but no one really knows when it'll stop, because it could stop next week, it could stop three months from now or two years from now. Then it can start report. again. Then it start again. But again, it's the lava risk there. there earth, there's also earthquake risk, which we covered last week. And there's specific things homeowners can do that are subject to the earthquake, like say in Volcano Village, they should really consider uh, tying their foundations down. And we covered that last week in the book. And, um, but uh, there are 
group with regard to hurricane risk. So where can I get this book just in case? Okay, just Google University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program and you'll scroll down and you can download the book. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the book, there's a lot of other information on um, retrofitting for, to make your house stronger. So things, things you can do. There are things you can do. Now, if the lava is going to cover my house, um, anchoring it down doesn't, doesn't help right. too much. But the, the, there is a, a substantial risk that it will not cover my house, but it will disrupt my house and do damage to my house. And that's why it's worth doing these uh, risk, um, risk what do you call it, risk? Uh, Retrofits? Yeah, mitigation fact, mi mitigation, steps in mitigation, um, retrofit steps yes. to protect my house uh, when, when it's not necessarily going to be covered in lava, but, but only damaged. Yeah. That's, that's right, because, uh, I mean, if there's lava, there's nothing you could do too much. But uh, in that area, there's also a lot of risk of fire. And we've heard about stories about houses catching on fire. Um, there are a lot of things you could do to protect your house from fire, like making um, defensible perimeters around a, a house and uh, also making sure you don't have a lot of um, old old things around your house that are just lying around easy, easily catch, catch fire. catch fire with some hot lava. Yes, and um, we're actually, for the fourth edition of the book, this is the interim update for, the hurry, for this year's hurricane season, but for the fourth edition that we do uh, in around three or four months, we're going to have a wildfire section in there also. So it's going to, the new editions will be volcano climate change, and under climate change, there will be wildfire, drought, heat. Sort of like in California right now. That's right, because wildfire, it, it's, a, it's actually a greater risk in Hawaii than people know about or think about. Yeah, things get dry, a right. little something starts it off, and before you know it, a lot of people are involved in getting hurt. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about the other risks here. Okay, why don't um, we go to the next slide? Next slide. Okay, so here's what we're talking about, and we could make an analogy to the volcano and the flows that are going to the north and south of vacation land. You would expect that there would be some risk in between there. Well, here's the same thing. This is a map. It's the, it shows the 2015 hurricane season, and it shows the tracks during the tw uh, of the different tropical storms and hurricanes uh, around Hawaii. There was a record number of 15 of those in 2015. And what you're seeing is tracks of hurricanes and tropical storms going north of the Hawaiian Islands and south of the Hawaiian Islands. And you, one day, people are going to be really caught by surprise when something goes right up the middle and uh, catches um, one of the islands. Like the volcano. It's very you, likely you, to happen, right? You, you don't think it's going to happen, and then it happens. Right. So why 2015? What happened in 2016 and 17? Okay, well, actually, uh, we have another slide that'll show that. So why don't we advance? Well, here's 2015, and this map just shows, there were, for the first time, we had three major hurricanes in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, um, and you can see where it surrounds the Hawaiian Islands. But the next slide after that, right here. Okay, so this graph, shows uh, the record of tropical storms and hurricanes going back 20 or 30 years. This is put together by the National Weather Service. And uh, you can see the, um, the, the, the record 2015 year is the third bar to the right. That was the most tropical storms or hurricanes we ever had, 15. That was during an El Nino year. During 2016, it tapered off, we were in what was El Nino neutral, and now we're in um, uh, a La Nina. 2017, we're in La Nina, but, and I'll explain the significance of this, because what's, what it's showing is the greatest number of, of um, systems are occurring during El Nino years. And actually, if you look at this graph, in 1982, there were 10. That's when Eva hit. And in 1992, there were 11. Um, 11, and that's when Aniki hit. They were both during El Nino years. And the significance of this is we may very likely be entering another El Nino period. 
Okay, we're, we're on an El Nino watch now. Can you explain that? What is that? Okay, so if you go to the Google NOAA Climate Change Prediction Center and you, uh, El Nino predictions, uh, you'll see that we're in an El Nino watch right now. El Nino watch means that within the next six months, it's likely that we'll be in an El Nino. Uh, we may not see the full effects of it, and it's, it's not certain. I think they have give it a 70% chance of it happening. Mm. Um, but uh, you may see the full effects of it, the hurricane season in 2019. But the thing is, a lot of the things we preach or we talk about in the handbook are not things that homeowners can just do like in a week or two. It's like there's so, it's like <clears throat> one month or two month projects to strengthen their house. And once, you know, so this gives us, uh, you know, we should really think about preparing right now for, you know, because there's even this year there's risk, but the risk may be even greater next year. Yeah. And just yeah. because in 2015 the hurricanes missed us doesn't mean they'll miss us next time. Right. right. And we're just going into the hurricane season now. Well, yeah, we've, we've been in hurricane season since June 1st. It goes from June 1st to the end of November. Yeah. And um, the National Weather Service always says, we, we, we always need to be prepared. So it's like, uh, it just takes one. And, um, you know, and it's not, they always say, it's not a matter if, but when. So it's going to happen. But, um, you know, the risk does appear to be getting greater. And mm -hmm. we should, we should, um, Really. So we have multiple risks to deal with. Yeah. We have the volcan volcanic risk in some places in the state. We have seismic risks, really, in more places in the state. Yeah. We have hurricane risks everywhere. You never know. We're, we're lucky we haven't had a big one in, a, in Oahu. Right. Um, and, uh, and we have tsunami risks as That's well. Right. So you have to look at this whole bundle of risks and decide how you're going to protect yourself. And what you told me before is there's always something you can do. That's right. You, see, you never give up on this. You never say, no, I'm not going to do anything. You have to do something. Right. So what's a good course of action? Okay. Well, I always, we talk to a lot of homeowners. So it's really a, um, you know, the frame of mind. You know, they have to think about these things. It's not to scare them, but it's just to, like, you know, going to the doctor so every, every often. Or it's, it's uh, having the right frame of mind. So, um Homeowners are always doing things around their house, kitchen improvements, uh, you know, bathroom. If they spend just a 10% of that f budget on making their house stronger, because really the cost to retrofit, say they had hurricane clips, the cost of it, that would be like one tenth of the cost to remodel your kitchen. And it makes, we always tell homeowners, make your house strong first and pretty. So. It's changing your frame of mind, you know, knowing what's important and, um, you know, the, the putting value on your house. Another, another good example is they always say you should um, paint your house every 10 years. And if you get a quote to paint your house, it's like $10,000. But put in hurricane clips, it can only cost $2,000 or $2,500. And once it's in there, it's on there for the rest of your house, the rest of the life of the house, protecting the house. Could save your house. Yes, and it could save your house. So really, just think about thing, little things you could do. Always think about it in the back of your mind and make it part of your decision-making process when you, you know, do things for your family or for your house. And then for the family, you know, we do uh, talk about emergency supplies. We covered that last week. And we're going to cover a little bit about evacuation planning this week, because this is the, really the part that w the reason that I think you wanted us to come back, because we didn't get to cover this last yeah. week about well, the evacuation let's planning. Let's take a break. Sure. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about evacuation planning. As you know, I'm really interested in that. I think we all have to be interested in evacuation planning. It's not something you can do on the spot, you know, when the storm or the earthquake or you know, the tsunami is upon you. You have to have it figured out in advance. We'll be right back with Dennis Warren.
You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. We're back with Dennis Wong, and we're talking about what you do to protect yourself against, to mitigate the risks that we all have to these natural disasters, which are, are coming. Right. We know they're coming. So one of the things you wanted to talk about is the load path type things with the timbers. And we can take a look at a bunch of slides that you brought uh, regarding what you can do about um, reinforcing the, okay. the structure of your house. Sure. Okay. So again, we covered this in past shows, but just to reiterate it for our audience, this is a diagram of what a continuous load path is. It's an engineering term, and it essentially ties the roof to the, to the, um, to the, to the uh, foundation. Okay, so each intersection in a house is connected with a, with a strong fastener, say a hurricane cl clip for the roof to the wall, a strap from the second floor to the first floor, and an anchor bolt from the um, bottom to the foundation. So it's like throwing a, roof, a chain over the roof of the house and tying it down. And this will protect your house against any natural disaster that's going to stress the members of the house. Right. It, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to protect you for a hurricane. It's going to protect you for an earthquake. And so we're going to show some slides and show you how that, how that works. Tsunami too, right? It's not a, a tsunami. Not a tsunami. Not a tsunami. Okay. All right. Okay, but uh, here's here's a here's a, a single wall house. Two pictures for a single wall house, and the top left one, we've added hurricane clips as a retrofit. This is for a single wall house. This this is not that hard to do, and the reason you do that is when there's a hurricane. There's uplift on the roof, and it could lift the entire roof off. If it, the roof comes off, the walls aren't supported, and it's sort of like it leads single to wall house, yeah. Progressive failure, and then the whole house could collapse. And then on the bottom right, a lot of single wall houses are in these post and pier structures. It's possible to retrofit that. We were talking a lot about that last week, yeah. Because this is what the people at Volcano Village should be doing. Um, their house because yeah. they get uh, magnitude almost magnitude four or five earthquakes every day right now. So the the uh, the idea here is you you don't want the post shifting on the pier yes. or shifting off the pier. Yes, it'll migrate right off the termite pan. Yeah, you know with with the different uh, and then everything's going to start coming down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else? Okay. Next. Okay. And then here on the left is a, again a diagram showing the continuous load path. And on the right is a picture. This will this is currently on our website, and it's like a new retrofit option that'll be in our update coming in three or four months. But it's currently on our website now, and it's actually um, create, creating the retrofitting to add a load path to a double wall house that doesn't have one previously. So mm -hmm. like all the Generally, most double wall houses built before 95 on Oahu do not have a load path, but you could add it with these structural screws. Makes it much stronger that way. Yes, yes. So it's tying everything down and together. And it doesn't cost much. It, it, it doesn't. It's, uh, the screws are like 50 cents a piece. And so I can do it myself. You can. It's a little tricky, but we do provide some uh, guidance in, in, in the, the book. book. It, it's it's in on the our book. web. That one's currently on our website, and it'll be in the book uh, for three or four months down the road also. What else can you do to mitigate? Okay, 
go on. Okay, whenever there's a hurricane, you have to worry about winds. And actually, there's a risk assessment that FEMA did for if, if an Aniki type hurricane hit Oahu, they expect roughly 50,000 structures to be damaged or destroyed. So, wow. okay, and a lot of it will be by the wind. Okay, so uh, in this picture, you could see the flying debris from on Kauai, on Kauai from Aniki. And uh, so it's important to protect your windows. Next slide. Okay, so uh, um, the reason you need to protect your windows is because um, if the wind gets inside, it'll blow up your house like a balloon and make the roof come more likely to come off. And the walls. Off. Yes. Push the walls out. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, um, the um, uh, masking tape will not work. So could we, if we could get that other slide, it was just shown here. OK, so one of the, two, one of the, the book has 12 different ways to protect your windows. And one of them is plywood. So this is an example of a house protected with plywood. And the, on the bottom, it's a um, sliding glass door and two windows, a, a window to each side. So that's, that's probably the cheapest way to protect your windows is with plywood. So you have to have the plywood handy. Maybe you leave it in your garage. Yes. And you have fittings so you can put it on real quick. Yes, it's in the book. It should be prepared, pre-cut, pre-labeled, pre-measured, pre-drilled, everything. Because it, it may take an hour to prepare each plywood for the window. But once it's prepared and you know how to do it, it takes five minutes to put up. Save your house. Yes. Okay. But you can't put them on just some windows. You have to put them on all windows. Yeah. Right. Right. Because the wind could come from any direction. Yeah. So why don't we have the next slide? Because um, this is another example of a sliding glass door, two windows on each side, one window on each side. But in the previous picture showed it protected with plywood. This is protected with impact resistant glass. This has actually gone through missile tests. They shoot a nine pound two by, two by four at 34 miles per hour. This is what's rated in like Miami-Dade, Florida. This mm -hmm. is what's required in a lot of the building codes, okay? So um, this is probably the cheap, the most expensive way to retrofit, but the window. And then there's like 10 other methods that are in between uh, that are in the book. So if I have the high impact glass, I don't need the plywood? Yes, it's in place all the time. So that's the advantage. And the, with the, the options, it's usually the trade-off. The trade-off is cost, cheapest being plywood, most expensive being the impact-resistant glass. That's the cost versus time to deploy. For the impact-resistant glass, it's always in place. So, and it, the advantage of it is it's always in there for a hurricane, for a burglar. It'll protect against burglars. It'll... Um, it uh, reflects the heat, so it has, uh, it's very cool. And it's, um, you can actually see through the window, but people can't see in during the day. So oh, it sort of like opens up your it's entire. It's sort of tinted, yeah. It's, it opens up your entire. So it's expensive. It's almost like buying a car almost you know, to do your entire house. But think of it this way. You buy a car, you drive off the lot, it loses 25% of the value right away, and, it, and it, it's gone, and you're not using it 10 years later. You buy this impact-resistant windows, it adds that much value to your house, it stays there, and it's going to protect your house for 50 or 100 years. You want your house to be there 50 or 100 yeah, years. And if, you're gonna, if you're going to renovate or remodel your house, it would be a good time to consider yes. high-impact glass. Yeah. yeah, So and, and again, People don't need to go to the cheapest method or the most expensive because there's 10 other options that are in between. So it's in the book. We don't have time to cover all of it, yeah. but it's in there. Okay, can we get to the uh, evacuation table? Sure, sure. Okay, so here, this is very important. Um, and we just briefly mentioned it last week, um, making an evacuation plan. It's not, it's, there's a lot of documents that just say make a plan, but it really doesn't tell you how or differentiate between a tsunami evacuation plan and a hurricane evacuation plan, which is different. This is our shelter-in-place table for a hurricane. And you can think of it like 
the story of the three little pigs. Uh, one made it with straw, another house <laughs> made of wood, and another with stone, right? And the concept is, you know, the stone is the one that survived the when the wolf tried to blow it, blow it down. Same thing. Inherently, your house is going to be dependent on what's it made of. Is it single wall, double wall, which is stronger, or concrete or stone, which is the strongest? Okay, and then it's going to depend if it has something like the continuous load path. Remember, we just mentioned the continuous. So houses built before 1995 don't have the load path. So inherently, houses built after 95 are stronger, but you could retrofit the houses built before 95 that they, they Get have to the same path. place. Yeah. yeah. So um, why don't we go to the table and I could try and explain it to you. OK, this is the big moment. <laughs> the okay. evacuation table. OK, so this is the shelter in place table. So shelter in place table. Sorry. Yes. It's shelter in place table. This is where you try to decide if there's a hurricane coming. Am I going to stay in my house or am I going to go somewhere else? OK, and the first thing I got to emphasize is you can't shelter in place if you're in a flood zone. If you have any risk of flooding, you can't shelter in place. You got to go. Yeah, you got to go. But on the on the um, table, there, there are three rows, single wall house, double wall house, concrete house. And then there's a, a, a double bar at the very bottom, unsafe, marginal, good, better, best. The idea is we want homeowners to be proactive, you know, Always make good, better, and better, best. And never let it rest till good is better and better is right. Yeah, with well, the three piggies, as you like. Yeah, okay, or the three <laughs> piggies. But the, let's take example for a single wall house, okay? So starting the weakest is a single wall house in poor condition. Poor condition, termite damage, wood rot, corrosion of fasteners. Always maintain your house to keep it strong. And then you move, the, the idea is to move along the table um, by um, adding hurricane clips, that'll add, and then you know doing foundation upgrades. And eventually, you can move along the table and um, uh, go into that. Other, you want to try and get to the right, the part of the table to the right. Okay. Now you said before that if it's a flood, we're not talking about relying on mitigation. We got to get out of there. Right. Well, what what other things? You know, what other set of circumstances? make me want to leave and what should what plans should I have about okay. evacuation well evacuation sheltering place is like a very personal decision mm. okay and it, people should really give it some thought where they're going um, there's we these are general guidelines that we provide in the table and but there are always a lot of variables for instance um, one is the flood you could be in a flood zone but even if you're not in a flood zone you could have flood risk, you know, because a lot of a lot of people get flooded and they're not in a flood zone. The other variable is you may be on topography or on a bluff or something where, where the wind is amplified. And then a really important one is trees. You know, um, I feel like my house is pretty strong because I, I do spend a lot of time trying to strengthen it. But right across our property, there's a big tree and you never know what's going to happen. So. Um, you always try and make things as strong as possible, and um, and but you can never plan for everything, and that's why insurance is important, also. So, um, what kind of insurance another... so should I get? Okay, well, um, you're all different kinds. Okay, so of course, if you have risk of flooding, flood insurance through the flood insurance program. Okay, um, uh, for a hurricane, everyone should have. Hurricane insurance and a lot of these insurances are required if you have a mortgage. You know they're gonna they're, the bank is gonna require you to have flood insurance if you're in a flood zone and hurricane insurance if you're. If yeah, you have the a bank mortgage. wants to protect its uh, right. Risk, they know its investment. Right. The, the houses are collateral for their mortgages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they want these they want these uh, the collateral to be around and survive these events. Yeah. Okay. And um, in terms of a lot of times there's confusion. Do I need flood insurance or hurricane insurance? So generally, if the water is coming from the bottom up, you need flood insurance. And if it's coming from the top down, you need flood insurance. So that's how you do it. And then uh, 
there's also um, regular homeowners insurance, you know, because that you should have anyway. You should have anyway, but that should cover like fire, robbery, you know, some windstorms. And it's important to read your policies because each company is a little different, and it, what's covered is a little is a little different. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of risks, um, and certainly you have to protect your home. Yeah. And uh, you can't you can't rely on luck. Right. You know, we 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 sort of led into a, this kind of uh, approach that we oh yeah we'll be lucky, but not necessarily not in Hawaii, not with the not with climate change, not with our history. Right. And so you you have to take proactive steps. That's that's right. And um, you may have seen an article in the. Um, Star Advertiser this morning because they were talking about um, flood damage in Texas from Harvey, and we were there in we were there in Texas to see the damage in Harvey, and um, eighty percent of the homes did not have flood insurance, and their the burden on them was was tremendous. You know, they a lot of people had flood insurance, and they go, oh, I haven't had anything in five or ten years. I might. There was one story in today's paper, the guy, he just let his flood insurance go like a year ago, a few months before Harvey hit. And well, I think that's, that's a lesson. That's the yeah. underlying lesson of all of this is you take all these mitigation um, steps, you do all the things you can, um, you have insurance, but you're never sure. You're never right. sure that you cover it all. Right. That's why we should do the show again and again, you know, okay. talk about covering it all. Sure. Dennis Wong. Thank you, Jay. Sea Grant College, thank you for coming down and, and check out the book and the website. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be